then we're going to go inside into our function room and do the balance of the presentation. But we are recreating what happened in the 80s to cut the ribbon for this opening. And Aaron, who has been behind us the whole time, gets the honor. This is him right over here, everybody. Raise your hand. Right? Wow. <laughs> Please enjoy the tours and demonstrations in the new maker space. And ooh and ah over all the renovated historic parts. They're beautiful. Be sure to look up in the ceiling to see the stencils that match the sconces, which are period now. And just so you know, we are always taking donations, and perhaps you <laughs> <laughs> I think Pam Coburn, Pam, you got him? Thank you. <laughs> no, they're not parting gifts. <laughs> this goes to Betty. Betty. <laughs> For the hardest person that works in this, the hardest working person, Aaron. <laughs> we promptly hit Ledge, where the utilities and drainage needed to go under the parking lot. Little did we know what the future months held. Getting all the many systems to fit in the limited ceiling space, COVID quarantines, labor shortages, and most of all, supply chain capitulations. <laughs> so I'd like to take about three minutes and 53 seconds. It's the kind of detail I brought to the project. <laughs> to acknowledge the amazing group that made this successful. After you've had a chance to look around, I think you'll be as impressed as we are by our new library. Our lead architect, Ron Lamar, had the creative vision we could build a new energy efficient library by wrapping the old building in a new tight building envelope and ramp the old levels to create an ADA compliant building on two levels instead of seven, all while keeping the library open and operational. Milestone Engineering was at the Zoom table each week and on site these many months. Kevin and Ernie, Adopted members of the library family. <laughs> and it should be engraved on Ernie's headstone. We'll make it happen. <laughs> they went above and beyond to get whatever we needed done, and always with a positive attitude 
despite the many inconveniences we may have suggested. <laughs> After a long day on site, Ernie would work at his home shop, recreating the historic trim or making just the right threshold to match the historic floor. As a gift to the library, he made this bowl from a maple tree on the property that came down during construction. Oh, wow. We want to keep him. <laughs> Despite their Herculean efforts, the fireplaces in the historic rooms won't be operational for a couple more weeks. We still have some delayed furniture. But that'll give you all a good reason to come back once the artwork is all up and the makerspace has its equipment and technology. I turn in my hard hat today <laughs> and face someone asking for less options wear it in the future. <laughs> Michael Bruss. Is Michael here? Where's Mike? I know he's here. He's yep. fighting. Michael. manager extraordinaire. He used his decades of construction experience to be Mayor's protector. No piece of paper, invoice or suggestion missed his perusal and response. He kept on top of the budget. He spent innumerable hours answering our questions, interpreting the construction lingo, and offering options and recommendations. All fell in line behind any sense that began, Michael says. <laughs> Paul Eldridge, Jonathan James, Ed Tuohy, all brought their special expertise and viewpoints each week. They might be suggesting lighting strategy, working as a liaison to the town, or be seen standing in the snow picking just the right siding color or CMU block finish. And we looked at them all. <laughs> Apostolis managed to do her regular full-time job as library director and an additional full-time job working on this project for the past two and a half years. She was always about keeping the patrons and staff safe no matter what the cost or delay. Her concerns for everyone who entered or may enter this building, never waver. Our community is so fortunate to have her leading all the new experiences, programs, and events this facility will allow for. And our final thank you to our library supporters, the Meredith Library Fund, the Friends of the Library, the Library Trustees, past and present, the Library staff, the Select Board, and most of all, our library community. This building is for you. speech, but Betty covered everything. <laughs> I really, as uh, I think I'm representing today the uh, select board of Meredith, who uh, has watched this project and I think been impressed in how it's gone. I'm not calling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I personally want to make a, a special thanks to Milestone and his crew, and of course, especially Ernie and Michael, and the uh, committee that every Wednesday morning met and said yay or nay on some deal. But we really, there are two people special. Betty Strader went over and beyond. There wasn't a penny that was ever out of place in the budget. And Aaron, who fought for many things that you now see in this building. Uh, it's just outstanding. The town should be so happy. And of course, the first thing was the town wanted the building here. I think we have succeeded. We have a lovely parking lot that goes with the building. Even though it is public, it seems to be that there's always plenty of space so far. Um, so I think it's a great spot. Uh, they've done an outstanding job. Ernie and I have a slight bet, and I'm going to win it. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it's just a wonderful building, and I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you. Since Jonathan has been wearing two hats, the select board hat and the trustees hat, 
it really has helped bring this project together, and he does get credit for that, too. Yes. <laughs> now, Vivian Mitchell, where are you, Vivian? Right here. Well, there you are, quietly sitting as possible, is reading two letters from our senators. So, it's my privilege to read um, the two letters, both the one from Jean Shaheen and our other U.S. Senator, uh, Maggie Hassan. So, the first one um, is dated December 4th from the United States Senate in Washington, D.C. Dear friends, I wish I could be with you in person as you open the door to the new Meredith Public Library. Please know that I join in spirit as library patrons and supporters come together to celebrate this wonderful new space. Thank you to the friends of the library and library staff for all you do to continue the number of services offered by the facility. Also, thank you to everyone involved in the design, construction, and funding of the thoughtful renovations to this historic building. I have always believed that a community library is important and should be a door to new opportunities to educate, inform, and relax. A library has many things to offer and connects even the smallest of towns to a much larger world of discovery and wonder. The books, multimedia, technology, and study and meeting spaces create opportunities for citizens to open their eyes to new ideas. This is certainly the case with this library a resource that has served residents of Meredith since 1901. In your new facility, you'll be able to accommodate the community's growing interest in your offerings. You'll have more room for bookshelves and reading spaces. You'll be able to hold workshops in a larger conference room. <laughs> All of this will help you fulfill your community-driven vision and further the legacy of this library. I wish you all the best as you continue your good work. Sincerely, Jean Shaheen, United States Senator. Mm -hmm. And the second one, also dated December 4th from the United States Senate. <coughs> Dear friends, I regret that I cannot be with you today, but I join you in celebrating the grand opening of the new Meredith Public Library. In so many ways, libraries are the cornerstone of our communities. They offer social connection, internet access, and countless resources from books to DVDs to local archives, all helping create a wealth of knowledge for all those who visit. The Meredith Public Library also offers clubs focused on genealogy and computers, as well as services and resources for community members who experience disabilities. This new space will provide Meredith community and surrounding areas with increased opportunity to gather and take advantage of the many programs and services the library has to offer. I'm grateful to the skilled staff who make these services and this space available to ensure that community members have the resources they need to thrive. Thank you to everyone here today and to everyone involved in making this grand opening possible. With every good wish, Maggie Hassan, United States Senator. Senator it's a pleasure to be here. Um, when I went to school, libraries were libraries. This is so much more, uh, not only in terms of what it provides, but in terms of what it represents to you as a community, having come together to fund, to design, to, to conceptualize, to assemble the resources and assets that you need to put this place where it is today. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to serve as a state senator in one appointed position on the, the LCHIP Board of Directors. And this project came before us. I came and visited this before this started, okay, because I'm very interested in helping our communities take historic buildings and preserve them and, in fact, enhance their utilization if that's possible. And in this case, it's just been a magnificent project. Uh, you have done marvelous things as a community. I think that Meredith as a community is pretty much the definition of why New Hampshire is a place to live, work, and play. And I think that your efforts have, are just so commendable. Uh, I'd like to present to the, the Board of Trustees or a representative thereof 
a resolution <laughs> from the New Hampshire Senate. Okay. okay. With the presentation was too. Sure. Uh, this is a Senate resolution. We do these for things that are worthwhile. We do them sometimes for people that have done noteworthy things in communities. Uh, we do them for organizations that do noteworthy things uh, and, and that are deserving of recognition. So from the New Hampshire Senate, a resolution, be it known that the New Hampshire Senate extends its congratulations to the Meredith Public Library in recognition of its grand opening and be it further known that the New Hampshire Senate extends its heartfelt appreciation to the dedicated staff, the volunteers, community members for the efforts to restore this library as an important local resource for future generations. Uh, my pleasure to sign and present that to you and to congratulate you all on this marvelous <laughs> President of the Meredith Library Fund, and I just want to say, uh, most importantly, this morning, uh, after all of our collective hard work, uh, that our little band of <coughs> funders, as I call them, uh, did exceptional work um, in about 14 months with your generosity, you our community, which is exceptional. We raised a million sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> as taxpayers because that reduced the bond by 21 percent uh, which is really a good thing and it really was a public private partnership uh, for this uh, town and the, the support was amazing so uh, a heartfelt thank you to all of you select board you and our community for supporting uh, this event most of you knew me as McDonate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to mention that last night we did hold a gala for our uh, naming opportunity donors here, and we dedicated this function room to Alexander P. Nichipora. That is not a name most of you know. But uh, it's very important that as you tour the library today, there is a beautiful bronze plaque <coughs> right here on, as you enter the room in his honor, which describes who Nick, forever to be Nick's room, okay, um, who he was, and the fact that when he passed away uh, in 2010, he donated his entire estate to the Meredith Public Library. Wow. As an endowment, which is used to this day to help support all the library's functions. He was a Russian immigrant, mm -hmm. MIT grad, literally, you know, incredibly intelligent man and absolutely loved this library. So it is extremely fitting that this will forever be Nick's function room, wow. okay? So thank you again. Oh. And oh, last thing, it wouldn't be McConey, sorry. <laughs> this is short for me. I know, I know. Uh, what we have done is there are a few additional items in furniture and such. Um, we've, we've updated our wish list or our naming opportunities list on Meredith Library Fund's website, meredithlibraryfund.org. So there are tables, chairs, other things that should you want to do that as you see the, the spectacular finished product, uh, that would be wonderful. You will get, as you'll see throughout the library, You'll see slate plaques, you'll see brass plaques of people who chose naming opportunities getting permanent recognition. So, thank you again. And we have a list for you today. Yes, that's true. Jim <laughs> Speaker is the Vice President of the New Hampshire Library Trustee Association and the trustee at the Cook Memorial Library in Tamworth. She retired from teaching middle school math two years ago and is happy spending time with her new grandson. She has been a lover of libraries all of her life and thinks that they are incredibly amazing and important places. And today she is giving a special surprise presentation. Please join me in welcoming Ann Chant. I wish I were one of those people who could just speak off the cuff, but I have learned. I have learned. So I do have a prepared speech. Thank you 
so much for allowing me to be here today on this grand occasion. I'm honored to present the NHLTA Special Library Service Contribution Award to a member of the Meredith community. I would also like to invite anyone interested in joining NHLTA to speak with me or Rosemary Darcy, another representative from our board, um, or through our website to join NHLTA if you have any interest. It's a wonderful organization. I can't tell you how much I've learned about the libraries in our wonderful state. In all my years working as a teacher, serving as a library trustee, volunteering on various boards, I have never come across as strong a recommendation as was given by Aaron for this individual. The accolades were seemingly endless <coughs> to the point where we on the NHLTA board wanted this person to come to our towns to help with. <laughs> Aaron spoke so highly of this gentleman and gave so many specific examples of his efforts that he almost seemed just too good to be true. He began his work with the Meredith Library as a volunteer on the library building committee. He was a neutral party who was able to get along well with both the selectmen and the library people. A separate board was created to fundraise for the building project and this man became the natural president of what was founded, the Meredith Library Fund. He not only procured many donations, but also repaired the rocky relationship between the town and the library. By meeting with potential donors in convenient locations and presenting the need for a new library addition to community organizations, this man enabled the Meredith Library Fund to receive over $1 million in donations. No doubt his positive personality built multitudes of goodwill. The warrant for the project passed with 92% of the attendees voting in favor of the building project and with the select board unanimously recommending the article. I know in Tamworth that, that can be a rare thing. Everyone on that select board votes in a positive way. We all remember our 2020 town meetings. You had one that was held in March as the threat of the pandemic took hold. Many businesses shut down, services were tough to come by. Pretty tricky time to start building a new library addition. This person remained undaunted, however, and reached out to local companies and organizations to build furniture, create blinds for the new windows, landscape the library's grounds, and begin work on a veteran's memorial and walkway, all of which would probably not have been financially possible without his determination. We are most impressed with this gentleman and see it perfectly fitting that he received the Special Library Service Contribution Award this year. It's my pleasure to give this award to James McDoney. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, good job. Oh, yeah. 